Hey guys, today I'm gonna to teach you how to pose a little league pitcher in terrible lighting locations because it's literally like one o'clock in the afternoon and like 90 degrees in a bad location. So I'm actually gonna start with my 70 to 200, which I changed the lens in the car before I came out just to reduce the, any chance of getting sensor dust in here. Um, I have this, that Sony A7R5, which does have, it, it shuts the, the shutter whenever you turn the camera off, so that reduces the risk of getting dust in here, but still I don't want to chance it because it's windy. I've had that happen before, not a good situation. So you want to try to avoid that by changing it in the inside, if at all possible, where there's no dust and wind, that kind of thing. So we're going to start out with 7200, like I said, first. I'm going to get some tight stuff of him in the stretch, probably getting the sign from the catcher, coming set, that kind of thing. Maybe, and maybe actually before that, we'll have some like tossing the ball up, holding the ball out, basic stuff, then more action type pose stuff, and then the actual action at the very end. So the, so the first thing we want to do is expose for our background, which I always talk about. So you want to shoot from the, you want to light from the back up. So I want to expose for the background first with the lights on, which you can't always get the lights on. If you can't get them on, I don't like having them in the background because it, it's just like as a black pole whenever it's bright outside and you're underexposing the sky with no detail. But when they're on, it gives you another element. And we can actually use practical lighting in this situation because we have two lights. We have two FJ 400s, one with the silver beauty dish, Joel Grimes beauty dish, which is 24 inches. The other one with a deep focus reflector. We, and we have those high, highly reflective modifiers. So, and they're, they're pretty directional. I've got the diffusion off the beauty dish because I want to get the highest output possible because we want to expose for the background, which is going to make it so because it's one o'clock and it's, it's cloudy, but there's no clouds over the sun. So it's going to be really bright. So we're going to have to darken that sky down. And we do that by increasing our shutter speed and our f-stop by using high speed sync. So when you do that, you're going to need a lot of, of, of light output to counteract that so you can light your subject up. So expose for the background first, which I've already done. I took a picture um, of him with just with nothing turned on. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again real quick so that everybody can see. So I'm gonna put both my lights to sleep. I've got the FJX3S remote here so I can control all my lights from it. So I'm just gonna have him stand there. He doesn't have to do anything. I just wanna get him just framed up generally how I'm gonna have him for these tight shots. And okay. And I've got the light behind him right there which is gonna be one of my setups just for the basic poses at the beginning. So my camera right now is reading minus two on the, on the metering. So that means that I'm two stops underexposed. And my settings are one four thousandth of a second, F5.6, ISO 100. So I'm gonna take a picture without the lights on. And see what we look like. So I always, I don't always, but a lot of times I will have, I will have the subject turn away from the sun so it's behind them and backlighting them. Even if it's the middle of the day like this, I'll get it by, as behind them as possible. But in this situation, we can't really do anything about that because the pitcher's mound is where the pitcher's mound is, right? So we can't move it. So the sun is pretty, it's directly overhead, but it's a little bit camera left right now. But because he's got a hat on, it's not making any kind of weird shadows on his face or anything. When he's looking straight, his hat's making a shadow over his whole face from the front right there. So, which is pretty good because I want, I want his face to be lit as evenly as possible. So we've got the light to his left, he's right-handed. So right now I've got the light to his left, so I've got the edge light to his left. So when I turn that on, that edge light, I'm using practical lighting to, to, for that to look like that is the stadium light lighting his back camera right, his back left side. And the beauty dish will light the other side, mimicking the sun. So that's kind of, your brain may not, people may look at that and not realize exactly what I'm doing, but their brains, it's gonna register. There's light behind him. There's light, so there's, I've got a light coming from the same side that's actually lighting him and the sun's the same thing. So it's gonna make sense even if people don't really realize what's going on. And that's what you wanna do is, you know, if a trained eye looks at this and sees it, they're gonna know what's, what I did, but the average person's gonna look like it's, it's gonna, it, their brain's gonna tell them it's lit the right way. Okay, so we're gonna take a shot of that first. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the background light on first. So I've got it set to group B, they're both on channel 11. Group B, I've got high speed sync turned on, which allows me to raise my shutter speed up past the camera's sync speed so that I can darken the background down and underexpose, because normally you couldn't do that with regular mode. You have to turn on high speed sync. You have to have a strobe that will do that. I've got another video on that, and I'll link that down below in the, in the, in the 
in the description so that you can watch that if you want to under, understand better how to use high speed sync and what it actually is. So we're going to turn that light on first. So we're going to start, like I said, with the background, then the edge light. I've got it set to full power just from experience. I know that it, we're going to need full power because it's so bright out here. It's probably, I would say, six or seven feet behind him. So another test shot. So that looks good. That's about 45 degrees behind him. And then lastly, we're going to turn the main light on. And it's on a set. It's set to a power of nine. Also, which these lights have nine stops of power, so it's full power. This is a beauty dish. It's not going to be quite as bright as that deep focus reflector because the light's not as concentrated. But we took the diffusion off because with the diffusion on, it wouldn't be quite bright enough. So now let's take a picture with that on too. Okay. Now turn turn towards the camera. Or turn towards your mom. Okay, turn your feet that way too. You can take them off the rubber if you have to. Now hold the ball out straight at me. There you go, move this way a little bit, good. Come back just a little bit. Put the glove like on your leg. Yeah, there you go, good, right there. Head out again, good. Perfect. All right, that looks great. All right, now um, turn back this way. Keep your glove right where it is. I want you to toss the ball up about face level. And it doesn't matter if you catch it or not. I just want you to keep looking at me the whole time, okay? All right, on three. <laughs> Jump the gun a little bit. All right. Ready? One, two, three. That was good, but look at me, though. And don't, don't have your arm out so much. Keep it a little bit lower. All right, one, two, three. Nope, you looked at the ball again. Doesn't matter if you drop it, I promise. Just look right here. Nobody will ever know. All right, one, two, three. Good. Not out so much. Come back in here just a little bit. All right, one more time. One, two, three. There you go. Good. Ah, my light didn't fire, of course. That was perfect. All right, just like that again. One, two, three. All right, again. One, two, three. There we go. All right, that was good. Okay. Okay. All right, so there's a couple, there's three poses real quick. Nothing too crazy. Um, just regular basic poses. Now I'm going to do some with him like he's actually pitching, but I'd actually throw in the ball yet. Okay. Ready? Don't look at me. Look where the catcher would be. Pull your head out a little bit. You're sinking it back just a little bit. There you go. Good. Don't move. Good. Now look at me. Right at me. Get your glove up a little bit higher. There you go. Good. Pull your head out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now get the stretch and do the same thing. Perfect. Yep. Look right down there. So I'm putting the camera down, flipping the screen out um, so that I can get as low as possible and try to make him look heroic. Even though I'm shooting with a compressed lens, it's still going to make him look bigger shooting down low like this. Okay. Ready? again. Look directly at me one more time. Okay, come set. Good. And give me your leg kick. Perfect. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my deep focus because we're getting more towards like the action shot portion. 
that's going to allow me to back the light up a little bit more and get a little bit more power because it's going to concentrate it more. All right, do the leg kick one more time for me. Put it down. All right, go put your leg down. All right, go up on three. One, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Don't bite your lip though. One, put it down. One, two, three. Good. Good. So I was having to put it down every time just because when they hold their leg up, it's going to tend to look not quite as real because he's not actually going through the motion. So setting it down and picking it back up helps. All right, now I'm going to take some, do that one more time from this angle. And then, which the background isn't quite as good over here. We've got a car and a dugout back here. So we've got like the concession stand. So you've got to be aware of all that. So there is like... A, a one building and like a big trash can back here. I'm going to try to block those with his body as much as I can. Okay. All right. Leg kick again. Well, go ahead and put it down real quick. I'll count. One, two, three. Look at that. Look at the pit, uh, the catcher though. One, two, put it down. One, two, three. Good. There we go. One more time. One, two, three. Good. Okay. Those are all good. Now I'm going to switch to my wide angle and we're actually going to, we're going to take the, the sequence right before the action and then I'm going to actually get him throwing. I'm going to set my camera to shoot high speed continuous so I can get an entire sequence of him pitching natural light just so I see the way that he throws. Because every athlete's going to be different. But even if it's the same thing like pitching a baseball, they're going to have different release points, their bodies are going to move different, they're going to have different windups, leg kicks, all kinds of stuff. So you want to see what the best spot to take his particular action shot is going to be because it might not be the same as somebody else's, right? So I'm going to do that first, natural light, like I said, with the strobes turned off, exposed for natural light just so I can see where I need to time this because when you have these strobes outside, they're set on full power and the FJ400s recycle really fast. They recycle at full power in one second. That's still not fast enough to shoot at high speed continuous, not even close because this shoots at 10 frames a second. So. That's why you only get one shot whenever the you're using the strobes. That's why we, you want to see exactly where to take it because if you just start shooting, you may be taking it at the wrong spot and not notice it. So I am at one 2,500th of a second F2.8. And then again, like I said, high speed continuous. So the high plus on this particular camera. All right. So I'm going to have you do just your entire wind up just like normal, okay? All right, don't go just yet. All right, so I'm gonna put the camera all the way on the ground just like I'm gonna do when I take the real picture here in a minute with the strobes. All right, whenever you're ready, go ahead, Camden. All right. Okay, so by doing that, I also realize that my lights are probably in the wrong place because I've got that air conditioning repairman back there and those buildings. So I'm gonna, I can't have the light in front of him, obviously. So I'm gonna move it. I had it to the right of him when he was releasing, so I'm gonna move it to the left side now. And you want these lights, this is cross lighting, so I try to have them exactly opposite each other most of the time for an action shot like this, because that creates more shadows in between, which makes the, look, the picture look more three-dimensional. So now I'm physically gonna move this way a little bit, which is gonna give me a lot more of a clear shot behind him for a background. All right, ready? All right, go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Much better, all right. So it looks like we're in the right spot. So let's go ahead and turn the lights on. 
All right, so let me take this off high speed continuous. I'm gonna go back to my strobes, how I had them exposed. So I'm at 1 4,000th F5.6 ISO 100, flash white balance. Let's take a, a test shot real quick. So I, I switched my, my 24 to 70 also. I'm not sure if I said that. And I'm gonna be probably pretty close to 24 millimeters. I want this to be wider and down as low as possible to make it look, to make him look heroic and as big as possible. All right, let me take a test shot. Would help if I turn my strobes on. Okay. There we go. And that looks perfect. Okay. All right, Camden, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. Go again. Go ahead. Good. Oh, that was good. All right. All right, so that does it. I think you can probably tell by the by the screenshots we put the settings up there i lowered the settings at the end and the reason was because the sun was actually going behind the clouds when the sun's out it helps you a little bit with fill light makes everything a little bit brighter but when it went behind the clouds i had to lower my shutter speed and my f-stop a little bit to compensate for that to make sure that my athlete was bright enough so you really have to pay attention to that whenever you're shooting your exposure can change depending on what the sun's doing when you're shooting in the middle of the day like this so I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd like it. You can hit that little bell so you get notified whenever I post new videos. There's going to be a lot more to come. So we'll see you again next time.